Hi, my name is Megan Sweet, and I'm the founder and CEO of Your Three Eyes, an educational consulting firm uh, based in the San Francisco Bay Area in California. Um, I'm an educator. I've been a lifelong educator. I've spent 25 years in education. I've been everything from a middle school teacher to uh, elementary school assistant principal and design leader. I have a doctoral degree in educational change management, uh, which means that I've spent a lot of time learning about how to create change in educational settings. Um, I'm the author of the book, An Educator's Guide for Using Your Three Eyes, which um, some of the topics of which we'll talk about today. I'm also the mother of an amazing 11-year-old son and um, the light of my life, and I'm a mindfulness super fan, so I'm a big believer that mindfulness is key to our path forward in um, education and making education more supportive and empowering for all of us. Today, what we're going to talk about is our ability to create change as educational leaders. As I mentioned, I am a lifelong educator, but also I have an extensive amount of experience learning about and studying how change is created in education. I've had the opportunity to create changes in individual schools um, at, this, at the school district level, at the county level, which in America means um, like a large cluster of cities together, and also at the statewide level. And what I've learned over that time is that change um, is absolutely possible to do. We can absolutely create the change we want in our own individual lives and in our educational settings, but we need to have a more well-rounded bit of information than we often use, especially when we're trying to create a change in our education system. Um, and that's where the three eyes got developed. So um, we need to start learning to see outside of ourselves and also to become aware of how we see and how that influences us. So this is one of my favorite quotes is from Anais Nin, which is that we don't see things as we are, as they are, excuse me, we see them as we are. And what that means is we are bound by our own experiences, our cultural backgrounds, our norms, um, the things that we've lived through in our lives, and they influence us often in unseen ways. Um, so we're not even aware that they're influencing us. So part of the trick to creating change in our personal lives, but also then in our professional settings, is to learn to start to see the unseen and learn what we can do with it once we have that information there. And that's the key to the three eyes. So what are the three eyes? There's three of them. Um, the first one is intellect. It's the one that we as, as Westerners tend to feel the most comfortable with, and that's logical thinking and reasoning. It's also what a lot of our educational systems are built on. It's built on building students' intellectual knowledge, developing that knowledge. So it's math, computational skills, our ability to write. Um, our reasoning. It's located in this frontal cortex of our brain right here. Um, so it's what we learn and, and how we develop. Um, but that's incomplete. It's incomplete because number one, our intellect is only one slice of the picture of what's really going on for us. So we need to learn how to connect in with those other parts. Um, but also it's prone to making errors. And so we need to start being aware of that because our intellect is actually influenced by things that are often go unseen or unacknowledged by us. One of those influencers is our insight. So insight, um, the way I define it, is deep understanding of a person or thing. It is our um, emotional intelligence, our ability to know ourselves really well, to connect in with and understand the influences of our cultural backgrounds, our family experiences, the positive and negative things we've undergone in our lives and how those start to influence us in really subtle and often unnoticed ways. Our insight um, often develops earliest. They, it actually develops in our, our early years. Um, the things that influence our insight, I should say, develop in our early years of our development. And so often they go without us seeing them or knowing them. But understanding what's there and what our influences are is a key to us being able to do something with them and work with it. Our insight is also our ability to do some perspective taking. So being able to look back at the trajectory of our lives, look back at our experiences, draw meaning from past experiences so we can change things in the future. And finally, the third lens is our intuition. And our intuition is really knowledge based on instinct or feeling, is learning to get out of our heads and connecting back in more with our hearts um, and with our deep personal knowing. So it's learning how to quiet the intellect and the buzzing in our minds and seeing what's there um, in a different part of our bodies, what information our bodies and our, some people call it our souls or our, our, in, you know, our, our higher selves, whatever your definition is, but there's actually information available to us if we learn to slow ourselves down and listen for it. Some of that information lives in our subconscious minds and we can learn to access it better when we start to tap into our intuition. 
So when you put all three eyes together, it's kind of like a three-dimensional seeing. So if you can imagine um, a flat and fuzzy three-dimensional picture, um, uh, when you put on those 3D, lens, 3D glasses, suddenly there's a depth of perspective and a clarity that isn't there before. So we're able to see things with a little bit more, um, yeah, weight or um, we can see around the sides of it we can it kind of comes out at us and when we can start to see in that way and start to see with three-dimensional sight we actually can start to see the challenges that are constantly getting in our way as well as the possible opportunities for changes um, because everything becomes a little bit more rich there's more depth there's more clarity um, so when we learn to see with three eyes it really does start to create um, a new way of seeing ourselves and moving through the world that lets us have a lot more information to work with at our disposal. And that to me is really important for educators. Um, so I have a model for creating change in educational settings and um, it starts with and is, is grounded in the three eyes and it's also in, grounded in a cycle. And the cycle I call uh, the self-work and schoolwork cycle. And self-work, the way I de define it, is really a deepened relationship with ourselves. So it's learning how to become friends with ourselves and to build that mind-body connection that I was referencing in our intuition, to learn to really connect in with ourselves, be friends with ourselves, and become curious about what's there. So when we start to engage in self-work, we become open to what might be um, some of those hidden influences that are affecting us. We start to tap into our inside a little bit better. We start to see how maybe um, the messages we received as children, um, or the cultural norms that we grew up with influence the way we show up and move around the world and the way we experience our day-to-day -day life. So through self-work, we, we just become better friends with ourselves and we start to learn that information more. That's important because um, I believe the key to creating change in our educational settings is actually learning how to um, invest in ourselves a lot more. So I think the key for educational, for educational transformation and for us to create real change in our educational settings is actually to invest heavily in educators' ability to do that self-work. There's actually research that shows that when educators are supported to do professional development, even if it has nothing to do with the content that they're teaching in school, they actually produce better outcomes for their kids. And I believe that's because the educators feel more grounded and connected to themselves and that that is the fertile ground for creating true change. So in my cycle of change that I, that I have in my book and in my model, um, school change starts with that self-work. So we start to work on ourselves and we develop first a greater sense of ourself and a self-compassion. So we know ourselves better and we also treat ourselves as friends. So it's not a, a way of getting to know ourselves that we can become more critical or harsh on ourselves, but actually it's getting to know ourselves better so that we can um, open up to with tenderness and with care those parts of ourselves that we're not so proud of that we wish weren't there. Um, and once we do that, then we're able to stay in and enter difficult conversations with more ease. So once we have a friendship with ourselves and we know that we're not going to abandon ourselves and we're going to back ourselves up um, through that relationship, it allows us to open ourselves to feedback and to conversations and to the difficult ones that often show up in our educational settings with a lot more openness. Um, so we are able to open up to those conversations and open up to the feedback that might be coming our way around how we are as a teacher or a school leader or our parenting um, so that we can um, really be ready for the schoolwork. So once we de develop that fertile ground of our relationship with ourselves, then we're ready to enter into schoolwork with a lot more depth and with a lot more ability to move. Um, my experience creating change in educational settings, like I said, from the statewide level all the way to the school level, is that it starts with a, a culture of trust and accountability between those people that are doing the work together. So to be able to create change and to wrestle with and go through all the hard work that happens with the school change, you need to be able to trust the people you're working with and you need to also be held accountable both for your behaviors but also for the outcomes that you're trying to um, create for your school or for your setting. So school work begins with building that culture of trust and accountability in a really intentional and thoughtful way. Setting up norms, making sure that folks are seen and understood and have ways of talking with each other and holding each other accountable when things get hard. Once that's been established, then it creates this really wonderful space for collaboration and transformation that um, 
really can't be beat in terms of school change. I've seen, and like I said, I've been a part of a lot of different profound change movements, including ones that were really painful that involved school closures or taking away programs, moving families to different schools. And we've been able to do all that because there was the spirit of culture, of culture of trust and of a collaboration and a dedication to the change that allowed us to do things that people thought were impossible. So that's the self work school work cycle. And it's a cycle because as you continue to deepen in your schoolwork, it provides you an opportunity to know yourself better and you start to, um, you know, it gives you an opportunity to deepen your own sense of self, your relationship with yourself. You become more aware of how your strengths and your challenges show up and you start to really build that relationship with yourself as you deepen it and move forward. So that's the cycle and that's how the three eyes fit in because intellect, insight, and intuition give us that, that three-dimensional seeing that lets us take advantage of, of this cycle with a lot of, um, a lot of profound results. Another way of thinking about this cycle that might be easier for some of you is that it's kind of like a yin and yang. And this actually, this framework comes from Dr. Kristen Neff, who is um, a professor in Texas, and she has been um, doing a lot of really profound work in self-compassion and the power of self-compassion. So she sees this same cycle as a yin-yang, where you invest in yourself, that's the yin side, um, and when we're with ourselves in a compassionate and comfort and soothing way, it gives us the ability to act on the world. So without that relationship first, we can't have the uh, clarity or the fortitude to act on the world. And when you act on the world, it requires that you go back to really your relationship with yourself again. So this might be a, help, a more helpful way of thinking about the interplay between self-work and schoolwork is a yin and yang back and forth kind of process. So just a, just a mental hold for you there. And like I said, um, when I was describing the, um, this uh, self-work, school-work cycle, it really needs to begin with a relationship with ourselves, and it needs to be one that is caring and loving and starts from a really assets-based point of view. And so part of the, this, the thing that we need to do as educators, and it's hard because we're kind of by nature giving people who want to give, give, give to our kids, but we have to learn how to fill our own buckets up first. We have to learn how to take care of ourselves and set boundaries and dedicate time to our own well-being so that we have the energy and the ability to bring that forward to our students. So the first step in starting your, your self-work is to dedicate yourself to some self-care practices. It could be mindfulness or meditation. Um, it could be learning to deepen your self-compassion and your relationship with yourself. Perhaps it's starting or um, recommitting to a yoga routine, routine, routine excuse me, or stretching, uh, perhaps some other kind of physical activity. Maybe you like to go running. Finding time in your day to build that back in a way that you haven't before. Um, it also could mean coaching um, or counseling. So finding someone to talk to to get some support as you move through um, the self-awareness that you're going to be diving into, which I think are really both wonderful um, strategies. So, But it starts with that self-care first. And really what I want to remind all of us is that we've got this. If we stop fighting the system and we start looking inward, I actually truly believe, and I know it's true because I've lived through it, we can create the educational settings that will allow our students to thrive. So again, when we take care of ourselves as educators, it makes us better able to take care of our students and to show up in the way that we want to. So I just want to remind us and give us that encouragement that it's okay to take care of ourselves not only is it okay, it's needed. So please um, spend some time taking care of yourself every day. Um, learn to work with yourself. I know it feels counterintuitive, but actually if we double down on our relationship with ourselves, we're so much better able to show up and meet our students the way that we need them to. So if you want to know a little bit more about the work that I do and um, connect with a lot of actual free resources that are available, I have a blog. Um, on my website, www.your, the number three, EYES.com, your three eyes.com. Um, I also co host a podcast called The Awakening Educator, where we explore different topics in education from policy to practice. So we usually have three or four part series where we really explore one topic from lots of different points of view. And um, we've had some really powerful speakers on there, so that's free and available. Also, lots of free downloads on the website of different um, materials that you might want to be able to use 
Um, I also do have some online courses to help you to start to get a, a handle on some of those things that are lurking and influencing us. That's called the Beliefs Lab. I have a school transformation process that I also can teach folks called The Cycle. And I'm a, I'm a certified mindfulness instructor. So there's lots of ways to learn about and work with me around mindfulness. Um, I also do coaching, group facilitation, but really there's lots of free resources. Um, I'm just really um, a believer in educators and I want us to be able to have the tools at our disposal to take advantage of, of our position in the world to really create positive change. I believe in all of you. I'm so glad that you've watched this little um, talk. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you so very much and have a wonderful day.